Welcome to Branson. Now, don't let this small, beautiful town in the Ozarks fool you. Branson is host to millions of visitors each year, and in the next 60 minutes, you're going to find out why Branson, Missouri is entertainment country. You know, after doing network television for over 25 years on shows like Eight is Enough and Charles in Charge, I've really come to appreciate family entertainment. And there is no place better for family entertainment than right here in the music show capital of the world. Branson is family. That's it. Branson is family. The people who come to Branson is like my kin folks. Branson is just so much fun from Silver Dollar City to the car races on the street to... Bumper boats. Uh, and Branson is that playground. So for adults and, and, and children that, are, that were inside of, well, actually are inside of, this is a great place. There's an excitement about a little town that has a lot of tourists. A lot of people coming specifically to, to see shows, wanting to have a good time. I think they're looking for uh, good, wholesome entertainment here. That's that's the word that is out on Branson, and it, it's actually what happens here. You can bring your uh, mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, or the kids, and you won't see any off-color humor or uh, anything on these stages that uh, the whole family couldn't set through. And I think that's what they expect to see when they come down here. It's kind of a small town that seven million people just happen to drive through every year. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get it out there, boy, and get it done. Yeah. Get it. Get it. When the sound and everything is right, I feel like I can sing forever. Just give me a, a stage and sound and lights and, and I'm happy. Because I really do get my kicks playing. We make balloon hats, it's called the airhead look. And and inevitably more adults have them than children. It's family. It's, uh, it's fun, it's entertainment. It's a down-home country spirit that makes America great. One of the things I love about Branson is you'll never know who you're running to! sound like that in the world and it of course belongs to Mickey Gilly. Mickey, thanks for uh, for hanging out with us. Hey, it's good to be here. You know, good to have you all at the theater too. Well, it's it's a pleasure to be <laughs> at the theater. You have been down here a long time. Uh, this is going into our I think 6 years. What made you pick up the piano? Probably Jerry Lee. I was influenced more by Jerry Lee than anybody else. I mean, I I, I really think that he's undoubtedly the greatest talent in our family even though I make fun of it sometimes. <laughs> He's, he's, he's a tremendous talent. Of course, you know, growing up with somebody, you have a tendency to pick up things from them. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I started messing around with the piano. My mother bought me a piano, and I began to play some of the, the licks that I had watched Jerry Lee play. And one of the things I got in trouble was playing that boogie beat. What brought you to Branson? Why Branson? When I first came here, it was like on a Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday when they booked me. And I'm wondering, what's going on in Branson, Missouri? you know, for me to come to Branson and play. And I, that was in, I think, 87, and the urban cowboy thing was beginning to subside a little bit. 
And uh, I was going to turn the job down because I said, I'm not going to go to Branson, Missouri, who ever heard of that place, and play to an empty house. And so the agent called and he said, tell uh, Gilly not to worry that we're sold out. And I said, something's going on that I don't know about there. And when I got here, uh, I said, uh, this is really incredible. And when I recorded Room Full of Roses, I never, uh, it was recorded for the back side of the recording. I went to the record, she called me baby all night long, and on the back side of the 45, I recorded a song called Room Full of Roses. The radio station flipped it over, started playing Room Full of Roses. Next thing I knew, I had a number one song. It was huge. When I found out the ladies liked the flower songs, I recorded every flower song I could find. <laughs> I recorded Room Full of Roses, I overlooked Oregon while searching for a rose, Big Bouquet of Roses, San Antonio Rose. The only one I missed was Tiptoe Through the Tulips. Caves are Tell a them long. Tell about the caves. Go ahead. Yeah, we, uh, we actually started underground with our music. Um, we worked in two different caves in the area, one called Fantastic Caverns, which was in Springfield, Missouri. And then after that, we worked in a cave about 12 miles from here called the Underground Theater. And the caves were cool in the summertime. So we had our shows in there. The temperature was 57 degrees. People would come in there to watch music and cool off a little bit. Well, back in 67, when we opened on Highway 76, we actually built the first theater on Highway 76. I say it was a theater. It was a metal building that we put a little stage in the end of it and would stand out front and try to stop cars uh, driving by to come in and see the show. We had folding chairs that had canvas bottoms, and sometimes the bottoms would fall through. It's <laughs> just uh, quite different than what we have today. We've got state-of-the-art theaters in Branson. Ours is um, one of the top ones and uh, the, the theater production is just unbelievable that, that happens today in Branson. We've got three generations on stage all the way from our dad who uh, will be 71 uh, this summer down to my uh, youngest son John who is 13 and then Gary's got three three boys on the show and then I've got another son on the show so we've got eight Presleys all together all guys uh, the guys get to have the fun on stage and the, the wives take care of the business end of it so it really is a family operation. The show is never the same uh, it's not intended to be that way, but uh, you know, there's always we do throw in little ad libs and, and different things like that, and they know they're going to be entertained when they come here to see the show. They like the comedy and the variety of music. Well, Gary's being modest on that side of it. There, he does the part of Herkimer in the show, and he, that's what keeps it different every night. He does some some different routines just to keep us awake on stage, and, and the people pick up on that and see the fun that we're having, and, and they really enjoy it and have a good time. I ought to give myself a raise. Yeah, <laughs> let's don't go that far. I I think that. There is nothing that parallels Branson as far as I'm concerned. You know, I've traveled around the world and I have not seen a place where performers are friendly and willing to mingle with the people, sign autographs. You basically, if you want to meet a performer, there is no one here in town that will not come out after the show and shake hands and meet people. And I think it makes everybody's, not day, it could be a lifetime. I'm learning to fish now, and that's fun for me. You know, I, I haven't done it before, so it's new. And they have like um, um, this new system here, the uh, Bass Pro Shop. They collect old Christmas trees and they sink them in the lake. And that's where fish lives. And they know exactly where it lives. So it's like the KGB, you just come over to the place they live, you throw in a line and here they come, you know, it's a very fun thing, you know. I came here 17 years ago, had a hundred dollars in my pocket, literally, that was it, for three of us, my parents and I, had a hundred dollars. And um, now we have 102. I really don't know any other place that would allow me to stay home and entertain people and go home and be with my children and my family. I used to eat frozen dinner and then I realized they should be warm because the gravy was crunchy. They gave us things we didn't know what they were, like a waffle iron. I didn't know what it was, my mom didn't know what it was, she ruined four pairs of my pants. Then uh, I, I walked in the restaurant, and in the bathroom in the restaurant, there's a sign that says, Baby Changing Station. So I'm thinking, if you don't like your baby, you get a new one right here. And you get french fries with that. What a country, all right. This 
is Marvel Cave. And what most people might not know is that this cave is arguably the catalyst that started the entire Branson phenomenon. See, long before the shows, songs, and entertainment, this cave was the main attraction, with tours that started in 1894. Then in 1960, the Hershians recreated a small mining town at the top of the cave to handle all of the tourist trade, which was the birth of Silver Dollar City. Today, Branson's largest family attraction for over 35 years. I'm Janet. I'm Peggy. And I'm Dee Dee. And, and we're the Lennon sisters. sisters. <laughs> you know, when we started, we were really children. I mean, Janet was nine years old, and I was 12, and and Dee, uh, Peggy was 14, and Dee Dee was 15. I mean, we were children. So we had fun because it was something different to do, although we had to get special homework from school, and we had to, you know, there was a lot more involved. But we were little kids. Now we're doing it more of a kind of a choice and bringing the families and living here because we perform but we can go home and get in our own beds with our own pillows and not be you know in Las Vegas or Tahoe or whatever <coughs> you have to come home and you're in a hotel and you're eating hotel food this is we have our own kitchens and we go between shows and that part of it is great plus our, all our families are here yeah, it's just great. most what of I, our family I think what I love about it the most is um, all of my children are employed at the same time <laughs> They're all employed here. <laughs> yeah, t three of my sons uh, sing with us and, and two of my daughters, so it kind of mm -hmm. feels good to have them all bringing in a picture. You know, we feel like we're <coughs> performing better than we ever have. We feel healthier and more energetic. Um, the show is a great show. We, we have a lot of numbers in the show, a lot of huge production numbers, a lot of dancing, five costume changes. The show is great. It's a Lawrence Welk big band with um, the four of us and our family and Joanne Castle are here year round, two shows a day, six days a week through December. And then rotating Lawrence Welk stars come in and out every couple of weeks. And uh, it's just a great show. People can come every few weeks and see a different show because of all the people that rotate in and out. It was really fun for us to come and do the Lawrence Welk show and see some of the entertainers that we haven't seen for 20, 25 years that we worked with. As kids. And our children never knew them. And so now our children are performing with them and got to know them and just they just love them too and they just go, oh, we remember the stories you told us about Jack Emmel or Joanne Castle or Joe Feeney and here they're meeting all of them and just loving it, just in awe of these people because it's like vaudeville. It's 
is something from the past that we grew up with that they've gotten to love too. I mean, we dreamed of this. We used to put on shows in mom's backyard with our kids and our brothers and sisters. Every 4th of July, we'd put on a big show in the backyard. And we used to say, if only we could like do this somewhere and somebody pay us to do this. <laughs> and now here we are and we're doing it and uh, it just couldn't be better. We're just thrilled. Couldn't be happier. Say it's me. Mm -hmm. Say it's me that you'll adore For now and evermore That's all That's all That's all That's all <laughs> I got a variety show we start at 9 o'clock. I do an hour and a half with a 15-minute intermission. And it's all variety. I come out and open up a couple of tunes, get some fun stuff going. I talk about some other shows in Branson. And everything is fun in my show. I was with Porter and Dolly for 12 years, and we were real, uh, real organized, you know. And uh, we'd have everything down to T, you know. Uh, but with Roy, I learned to loosen up a little bit. And don't worry about mistakes, because... And once you make the mistake, it's history. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Because when you run out there in front of them people, in front of that mic, in front of the lights, you give it your best shot. It's the last of the ninth with two outs and two strikes. And you got to go for it. You're on the two-yard line. You got to go for it. If you miss it, you miss it. You know, and don't worry about it. Because I've come up with some funny stuff, you know, by missing it, making mistakes. He always... It was so easy, it was a piece of cake. We taped 13 shows in June, 13 in October. Everything's done in 13s. Archie Campbell's Barbershop, we'd do 13 of them just like that. He'd do it in an hour and a half, probably. Move over here, I used to do the little talking blues, like, down in the hen house on my knees, oh yeah. You know, I'd do 13 of them in a matter of 30 minutes. I was through for six months, right? And if you're not in the out there shooting that day, you wouldn't have to show up. Tillis and welcome to the show. Mel, you uh, are definitely one of the kings of Branson <laughs> with a whole new show. Well, we got one this year. We play Cowboys and uh, and it's called How the West Was Sung. And, and it was written by my buddy from LA, uh, 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 Mr. Saul Elson. Uh, it's a great producer and writer. And uh, and he wrote and he wrote the show for us and it's uh, it's a whole lot of fun to do. It really is. Boy, we get to play everything. You cowboy, I play Gene Autry, I play I I I, I play Tex uh Ritter and uh, what, John Wayne. Gary Pooper and John Wayne, la dee da dee dee. La dee da dee do. <laughs> so I'm having a good time. But I've been in 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 movies with Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Kirk uh, Kirk uh, Kirk uh Douglas. <laughs> And uh, and Anne Margaret, at a movie called The Villain, uh -huh. and that was in the movie where Arnold Schwarzenegger he told me I talk funny. <laughs> <laughs> and coming from Arnold, that's not a good thing. No. Do you ever get tired of the beauty around here? No. I, never, I had to be. I'd had to be crazy to do that. <laughs> Is that what keeps you here? Uh the beauty of everything around here. Mm -hmm. I think the people that, that are coming from all over America and from all over, I had some folks in here the other night from Israel. From Israel. A whole a busload of them. And, uh, and and from Japan, we had some folks here from Japan, didn't we, in Australia, they come from all over the world. And to me, well, that's the beauty of it. And then when you get here, you got all this extra, like all, all the granary, the mountains, the lakes, and the, and the people, and uh, it's just, a, you know, a wonderful place to to be, and I'm and I'm very fortunate, you know, and blessed man to be here. You know, I'll be 63 by next. When August 8th, I'll be 63 years old. 
I'm old enough to retire on my social security. My plans are made, thank you. I'm going to get me an RV camper and a poodle dog, and we're going to Branson. <laughs> <laughs> You know, while Silver Dollar City is Branson's largest family attraction, it's by no means Branson's only family attraction. There are many great ways to start your morning in Branson. For instance, you can start your morning with Mutton Hollow, enjoy horseback riding, watch artists in the craft village, take in a great show, and spend the day with the entire family. It's all right there in Mutton Hollow. Did you know that Branson is home to the world's largest ducks? <laughs> well, actually, they're just called ducks. In reality, they're a great way to take a tour of the city and a tour of the lake. So come on, try something new. Ride the ducks. At Roadsters U Drive, you can definitely get in the mood for having fun. All right, nice tan one. Yeah, here you go. Thank you, sir. Sure. Okay, seat belts. You're all set. Okay. Hey, have a good time. Right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now this is a classic way to see Branson. This is the showboat Branson Bell, and it's believed to be the largest inland paddle wheeler in the United States. The showboat cruises three times daily, and that includes a full service meal and a great show. raft in the storm. To me it represents a kind of a time and a place in a hometown that, that, that went away for most of us, that's back again. And I like to refer to it personally, I like to refer to it as America's hometown. Most of the shows in Branson, just about all shows in Branson, are music with comedy. And our show, the Jim Stafford Show, is comedy with music. Here's a little song called I'm Getting Out of Prison Today. <laughs> I try to do the kind of show that I would like to see. I try to do a show that's that's full of surprises. It's really, honestly, hard for me to talk about my show because uh, because I do have enough surprises in it that if I say too much, that I feel like I'm giving some things away. What I worked at is being a performer. That's what I worked really hard at, and that's what I'm working at now. And. Uh, uh, and, to, and to be in a position uh, uh, not, to, not to have anybody between me and my decisions is, is just glorious. Because I'll tell you something that some people overlook about this town, that, that, that these entertainers, all of them, myself and everybody else included, really loves. And that is this. Nobody tells you anything about your career except your audience. Nobody tells you anything. You know, if, if, if I say something that's supposed to be funny and they don't laugh, I either fix it or I get it out of my show that day, you know, because I don't want to say something that they don't laugh at. This is the astrology game. You holler out your sign, I'll tell you all about yourself. Ready? Go. Pisces, sign of the blabbermouth. They always yell first. What is it over here? There isn't anything like it. There never has been anything like it, and there isn't going to be anything ever like it. This is it. It all starts and stops right here. Well, the Ball Lover Show started in 1959, uh, down on the lakefront, Tenicomo Lake. Uh, my father and uh, three uncles started the Ball Lover Show in a building that seated maybe 50 people. 
It was actually, I guess, in City Hall, mm -hmm. downtown Branson. Oh, and like you said, yeah. And like I said, it seated about 50 uh, people. And my dad, which is Droopy Drawers on stage, he plays the character Droopy Drawers. And he was always the one because they'd maybe some nights have uh, three or four people. And if they had under, what, 10 people? Under 10, they didn't play. 10. Dad was the chosen one to go out there <laughs> and say, now, try to come back tomorrow night. We're going to see if we can put a few more with you tomorrow <laughs> night and see if we can have enough to play to. And, you know, and, and so he was always, he always says he was picked for that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but uh, it started. I mean, it's been a long. It's nothing's been easy. People come down today and they think, "Well, look at this nice theater and all this, you know, this uh, motel." But they and, worked hard. But yeah. they really. This worked. has been they redone how hard. many times this, this year? Is our sixth renovation. Yeah. But uh, they have absolutely put their souls and hearts into this thing. Obviously, for the next generations, which you know, I'm real. I'm real grateful to them yeah. for that. Well, we're getting ready to play softball. <laughs> uh, we've played softball the last two years, I guess, and a lot of the other theaters get up softball teams. And uh, so we're getting ready to put the schedule together, so we got to practice a little bit first. But we're golf's, all big into sports. Yeah. Any golf's sports. really big here, too. I mean, we got Point Royale down here, and all the shows meet down there and have a league on Wednesdays. And we just haven't gotten quite good enough to get involved with them yet because we're still shooting, you know. In 140, 150, but, <laughs> no. but we think <laughs> we're not quite that bad. 140. <laughs> <laughs> it's family. It's uh, it's fun. It's entertainment. It's shows. It's uh, fishing in the daytime for dad, and it's go karts for the kids, and after the show, and and uh, funnel cakes, and you know, it's just all wrapped up into one. There's something for everybody, no matter what your taste is, and no matter what your age is. And it's a fast moving, yeah. you know, a variety that's, show. And that's a comment we get a lot of times: is how quick the pace of the show is. You know, there's not a lot of dead space. You're not. Hopefully, you're not going to sit there there's, and be bored. There's no egos to uh, attend to. Yeah. Right. It's just everyone has their own job, uh, and I personally think they all did very well. We have a little rock and roll. We've got lots of country, lots of bluegrass, gospel. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, we've got 40s, 50s. It's just anything across the board. We try to, we try to give something to everyone. <laughs> I grew up in the cotton patch, and uh, getting in the Air Force was my way of getting out of the cotton patch. And there's nothing worse than picking cotton. <laughs> I don't care what you want. So you went to picking guitars instead? Picking guitars. My dad played the fiddle. As a matter of fact, that's his fiddle right over there. It belonged to my grandpa. And uh, he bought me a guitar so I could what he called second with him while he played the fiddle. And of course, we all, everybody in our family sang. And, uh, between picking the guitar and, and joining the Air Force, that was my ticket out of the cotton patch. Now this museum is very special to you because so many things were give, just given to you. Everything in this museum was given to me except my guitar and that fiddle over there. And uh, practically everything else was donated. What about favorites? Do you have, yeah, I mean, there is so much to look at in here. I mean, there's how many gold, gold albums? There's 15 gold albums and four platinum albums in here. Uh, favorite things of mine, of course, is that cockpit of that KC-97 tanker back there. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Rogers, America's Lou Yoder, the singing brakeman. I've got his guitar that he recorded almost 90 of his great hits on. Uh, other things that are favorite, just even the smallest, tiniest pin in here, uh, I'd have to say would be a favorite of mine because it was given to me with love from the fans of Boxcar Willie. Why railroads for you? Well, I was born on the railroad. I live about six feet from the railroad track. My dad worked for the railroad. And uh, it was just a, you know, a natural love. It's like a fish that grows up. He don't know he's in water, you know, until somebody tells him. We've had people who've seen my show as many as 180 times. We've seen people who've seen the show 150 times. We've seen people who show 50, 60, 80 times. And I don't know what, why they keep coming back. I guess they keep hoping I'm gonna get it right. <laughs> but, uh, it, it's, it's just wonderful that, that I've got fans like that. What, what's in the future for Boxcar? Where are you headed? Well, <clears throat> I, I think I told you I just wrote a book. Right. And it was a very easy book to write. Uh, it, it, this book is different. Uh, not too much has really ever happened to me in life. So I just put a bunch of blank pages in there and some pictures and let everybody figure out their own stories. <laughs> I like and, that. And the book has no chapters. Because if you have chapters, there has to be a last chapter. And I'm not ready for that. 
This is one of Branson's more unique attractions. It's the Stone Hill Winery. And it's the only winery within 150 miles. You can come in and enjoy a free tour, enjoy a free sample, or you can choose from one of 16 different great wines, which they'll be happy to ship to your home. It's a great way to end a day or start an evening. Hungry yet? Whatever your budget allows, or your taste buds demand, Branson has got it. From Ozark buffet style, to elegant full menu dining. And any way you slice it, it's good eating. I think uh, the whole situation uh, of, of growing up on the farm and, and being very poor drove all the kids away to do something to try to make more money. I kind of lucked out as a, my dad's sister had married a guy that had a band in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And when I was about 15, uh, he said, hey, well, of course he didn't pay me very much. <laughs> he was actually a nice guy. but. That's, uh, I wanted to play and sing. I carried a guitar with me everywhere. I learned at a real young age that I could take, well, I could stand out there in front of the ice cream parlor and uh, kids would, and people would gather around and they'd buy ice cream and Mrs. Bugs would give me ice cream. I said, hey, this is pretty good. I could get to play my guitar and I get free ice cream. Uh, that was my first <laughs> money-making adventure. And I must have been, let's see, fifth grade, fourth grade, somewhere along in there. And, uh, but when I was 15, I went to work with Michael's band, and it, uh, just seemed, that's all I ever wanted to do was play and sing. And then at about uh, 16, uh, I got introduced to Django Reinhardt, and then I was going to be the greatest jazz guitar player in the world, which uh, for some reason, the singing got in the way. And I'm glad it did, because singers tend to make more money than guitar players. We can do a Broadway type of show here, because we have the staging to do it. In fact, we, I, we, we kind of do that kind of show here, you know, with running the sets in and out. We have eight dancers, uh, and it makes it real easy for the band. Uh, they love it, because everything you want, you got it at hand. We have in-house in uh, video, in-house sound. We have uh, as good as any recording studio you'd want to record at. Uh, it's just all here in one, one place, and you can do shows out of here, you can do television shows out of here, we're set up for that. It's, a, it's, it's really an advantage to have your own place, I think. But just to actually, just give me a, a stage and sound and lights and, and I'm happy. Because I really do get my kicks playing. I'd rather be here than out beating the road. I'd much rather be in Branson than out beating that road. I don't even doing two shows, I don't mind that. I'm kind of enjoying it because, uh, you know, the band and I, we'll just, uh, we'll just play sometime. We'll just do stuff that we really enjoy doing other than the show, per se. That's when it's fun. Good food. Uh -huh. And atmosphere. Oh, yeah. We got sweet potato fries and homemade beer. Spoon bread. Uh -huh. Butter beans and corn. Have yeah. you been living on them since you were born? Y'all come down to the double cup. You'll want everything you see. Y'all come down to the double cup. Where the second cup's on me. We got pecan pie and biscuits. Fresh fish from over yonder. Come on down to the double cup. Where you know it treats you nice. You come down, we'll fill you up. It's a Highway 57 paradise. Cheese grits. Yes, now how about some barbecue? Right. <laughs> My sis and I will take good care of you. You like succotash. Well. Have a soup to start. Yeah. Our menu is a road back to your heart. Oh, we keep the whole place spick and spread by scrubbing it all. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the authors and the original performer of the show from Broadway, Mr. John Foley. Hello. How are you? Hello. Thank you Glad for spending the time with you. Yes, oh, nice to meet you as well. Uh, we were talking a little bit. Who designed your set? Uh, this is designed by a wonderful designer in Chicago, Charlie Christensen. And he kind of uh, captured that thing. I mean, this story is about a funky old diner and a gas station and the guys who run it and the waitresses. So we had to go back to that kind of lost diner that we're all seeking, you know. What inspired the show was inspired by when I lived in North Carolina, me and the other co-authors 
spent a lot of time in these kind of gas stations where you could go and you know have a coke and tell stories and stuff like that. It was kind of a social center, you know, in small towns. So the show was written and was a big hit on Broadway. Ran for a couple of years, had a Tony nomination. And while one of my partners, Maggie LeMay, was working at the Kennedy Center with the show in Washington, um, the show's played all over the place. Um, we kept hearing about Branson. I mean, you have to be living in a cave to not hear about Branson, right? So. Uh, <laughs> We thought the subject matter, you know, of the kind of people these characters are in this play would be perfect for Branson because it is where the show kind of takes place, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. The fact that, that this is a dinner theater style right. uh, performance it was really not what you had in mind, is it? Well, no, we were looking for theater in Branson and we found this theater which had a kitchen on the back, so the obvious thing was <laughs> to serve food. But it, it serves so great. I mean, the whole room is kind of an extension of the world on the stage and the fact that we have a diner in the show and that we have people, you know, getting food served by dinettes or waitresses, you know, it works out great. And I mean, it's sort of to be a little lofty about this. You feed people literally and artistically by giving them good food and then you give them a good show which feeds their spirit, so I feel like we give them the complete works here. Meet the Bump Boys, meet the Dinos, on Highway 57, Bump Boys, send down hits, meet the Bump Boys, meet the Dinos. I'm better now at what I do than I ever was. And that's true, I think, for most of the performers in Branson. So when you come through Branson, you never see a bad show. You see, you never see an amateur. You see it a pro perfected and honed down to its perfection. That's what I love. And then there's this mutual respect, this rooting each other on, because we've all known each other for so many years. You know, this is unprecedented. This has never happened before, not even on Broadway. Well, one of the great things about Branson is that you can write your own show. It's your own theater. And you can really bring to the people who you are. And I've been here now two years. And in two years, I've written two plays and performed both plays. One was called Jukebox Dreams, and one is our Christmas uh, annual Christmas show called Santa and Me. And it's dialogue with musical. It's a musical. It was written by me. And it was a chance for me to express my creativity, whereas I couldn't do that in a club in Vegas. I always wrote my own shows, but here I was able to write plays. I mean, here I'm able to, to use the theater as a workplace, as a creative think tank. I mean, I have everything available to me at my fingertips. I want to bring the, fly something in, the fly a set in. I create it, fly it in. We're able to show and flex muscles we never even knew we had. So the audience is now seeing us even in a deeper sense. They're seeing the total creative spirit. There are a lot of people out there sing better than Tony Orlando, and dance better than Tony Orlando, and tell funnier jokes than Tony Orlando, for sure. But I'll rival anybody when it comes to reading an audience. Because I love people, because I listen to them, and because I want to know what they're feeling and thinking, and then I want to supply what it is to make them feel good. How could you not want to come here? It's got it all for everybody, it really does. And I'm not just playing Chamber of Commerce. I love this town, and I've been around 34 years. I've played a lot of different cities. I know where it is and where it isn't. And I'm gonna tell you something, I've never seen more magic than I see in this town. And we're just beginning. This city is just beginning. This is just a baby. Do you like it here? <laughs> I do, <laughs> I do. I would stay here if I had no theater at all. I found my utopia. Did you know Branson has more accommodations than many large cities? But no large city gives you what Branson can right outside of your window. The true beauty of the Ozarks. So you decide, motel, hotel, resort, or campground. There's always room for you in Branson.
the Ozarks Discovery IMAX Theater, you can experience award-winning film technology that allows audiences not only to see a movie, but to feel the action as well. It starts with a six-story screen and a 22,000-watt sound system. Now that's entertainment. Branson's more inspiring attractions is Waltzing Waters, with more than 40,000 gallons of water in flumes up to three stories high, where you can enjoy Frederick and the Fountains of Forever. When it's time to cool off, Whitewater is just the place for you. You can enjoy some wild rides or sip a cool fruit punch by the pool. Whichever you choose, it's waiting for you right there on Highway 76. Another big part of the Branson experience is the shopping. And whether you're a bargain hunter or just a happy browser, Branson offers a great shopping variety. You can explore a sprawling outlet mall or stroll a sophisticated shopping village. And whether you're looking for the most common item or something a lot more unusual, shopping is always fun in Branson. you Branson would be unusual. Actually this building was constructed in honor of the new Madrid fault line which runs not too far from here. In the 1800s that fault line caused an earthquake so powerful that it actually caused the Mississippi River to flow backwards for three days and rang church bells in Philadelphia. Believe it or not. You know, you can really get wrapped up in Branson and have a ball. <laughs> you know, there's plenty to do here in Branson, whether you spend all of your time indoors or out. <laughs> you know, this is a little like driving the freeways on your way to the studio in LA. 
What is it about Branson that brings so many people here year in and year out? I think Amer Branson reminds me of what America used to be like. By that I mean you can walk down the street at any hour of the day. There's very little crime. People get along with one another. It's family oriented. Uh, we, we put up the flag. We sing God Bless America and nobody thinks that we're squares. Um, it, it's just uh, a place that uh, People can come to and they can see any show and not be concerned. Is something going to be said? I'm here with my daughter, or with my grandmother. Are they going to say something that's going to embarrass us? Um, that has a lot to do with it. I mean, there's got to be a reason why people are driving thousands of miles. They, they drive past L.A., they drive past Vegas, they drive past Atlantic City. To come here, there's nothing like a live performance for me. I mean, that's what I was meant to do. I, people, from the time I was a little kid, people say, are you going to make it? You can't really sing. So wait a minute. It doesn't matter. It does not matter, can I sing, and and, and I'm not going to be good enough, and the competition. It, in heaven, there's a book. In this book, it's already written. The Lord has written down. Bobby Vinton will have hit records. He'll perform <laughs> for many years, and folks, anything you say about it is not going to change it, because it was meant to be. I believe that. Do you have... Uh a favorite portion of the show, one that you particularly love? Uh, I think the closing of the show is my favorite because I start playing all the instruments. You see, people don't know that I'm a musician. I went to Duquesne University, uh, recently honored as honorary doctor of music, played oboe with the Pittsburgh Symphony when I was 16 years old. When I was 17, I led the NBC staff band that Doc Severson had. So I have a big musical uh, background. And when I get up on a stage and start playing all these instruments, some of the guys at the set back, so my wife likes them and he sings Blue Velvet. Then all of a sudden I start playing the drums and the trumpet and the saxophone and the clarinet and and then we start parading around the, the showroom with our, our Mardi Gras uh, animals and set up and uh, it really uh, comes comes alive and it's exciting because uh, anybody who didn't believe by that time believes. Now that you're here in Branson and, and you have control of your own show and you have your own theater, uh, you've brought the family in. Yeah, Branson is family. They they love if you have your family with them. I mean, I could bring the greatest act in show business on stage. It wouldn't, it wouldn't phase anyone. But uh, when I bring my mother on stage, and she can sing, and she can dance, and she gets them uh, going, it's it's really something. Then I have uh, two daughters who sing, and, and when we do, say, Chattanooga Choo Choo, they come out kind of in a train, and uh, I sing with them. So even though we're doing, uh, with the Miller Orchestra, the, the old songs, we do it in a new way. Way. We all we're all young inside. It's just the outside that gets a little older. But inside, there's the, I see all all young teenagers sitting in that audience that still uh, want to ha laugh and have fun. And um, I I kind of bring that out in them, and uh, they enjoy it. They can't do it at home, but they can do it in Branson. My dad, we had an old Philco radio, and he would tune in on Saturday nights. Uh, grand, the Grand Ole Opry out of Nashville. We only lived about 275 miles from Nashville, and 50,000 watt station just beams right in there on a clear Saturday night. And wasn't much to do but fight mosquitoes and come out of the cotton fields and listen, so that's about what what we did. And I, I just got hooked on the music and started singing it, and here I am. That's just, It's just as simple as that. You cut your first record in 1966? Yeah. Well, I recorded it in 1965, August 16th at 2 o'clock, on the same microphone that Elvis cut Heartbreak Hotel on. In fact, they told me that when I walked in there, and I rubbed the phone microphones to be good to me. So, um... And it has been pretty good. When is it that you know that song's going to be a hit, or do you ever? Well, like Kissing Ain't a Good Morning, I couldn't wait to get in the studio to do this particular song. But if anyone had told me it would have been, did the success of what it, what it turned out to be, there's no way that I would have thought it would have done that. Because at the time that Kissing Angel came out, and especially at going to the top 20 in pop. There, the M.O.R. and pop station was not lenient about playing a good country record, especially that had steel guitar on it. And uh, of course, Kiss and Angel Good Morning is laden with, with steel, steel guitar. I think it's apparent, it's apparent when you come to my show, out of all these years, I've had people say, man, so you, I had fact, uh, when I was signing autographs yesterday, a lady came through, she says, you just seem like you just enjoy what you do. Uh, I said, well, I do. And uh, uh, those are things that you're not able to manufacture. You know, you either do or you don't. And uh, uh, when the sound and everything is right, I feel like I could sing forever. There's an excitement about a little town that has a lot of tourists. 
A lot of people come in specifically to, to see shows, wanting to have a good time. I'm one of those performers that has to get ready way ahead of time. You know, I get psyched up and I can't, some performers can just come in off the street and go on stage and, and do it, I can't. I know pretty much what I want to sing as far as my part of it. When you get into the production part of it, uh, it wasn't my idea to do Carmen Miranda, although I thought Carmen Miranda should be represented as part of this tribute we're doing to the movies. We're doing a whole 45 minute spot. And so we felt that uh, Carmen Miranda ought to be represented, but I thought it was going to be a dance number with uh, somebody playing Carmen. So as we got more into the and talking about it, I suddenly said, well, who's going to be Carmen? And, all, and nobody said anything. And everybody was looking at me and said, you're kidding. I mean, I, you know, I'll do a lot for, for the show, but I've never been in a dress. And, uh, but anyway, it's been fun. It's very difficult. The hardest part of the whole thing is wearing this head, the Carmen Miranda headpiece, which goes up about a foot and a half of bananas and all kinds of fruit. Keeping it on without a chin strap or something, I didn't want that. That's difficult. And then when they decide, when we really got into it, they decide that they were going to do a lift with me up here. Well, you know, I'm not a 110 pound little girl. But anyway, it, it worked out all right. And then it's, I, I, it's meant to be funny, and I hope it's funny. There's so much variety, and there's so much that people can, can uh, enjoy. I don't know any place in the United States or any place in the world that's like Branson. And it's all in a small town atmosphere. Wear cowboy clothes and go to shows. In the summer you wear shorts and t-shirts. Um, it's, just, it's just fun and it isn't expensive. There is still a place in America that is waiting to be discovered. A place where you can sit outside and stare at the stars. Come inside and do the same. Where getting high means a roller coaster ride or a walk on an Ozark mountaintop. A place where people are so proud of their work, they put their name on it. It's called Branson, Missouri, and it's for everyone who wants to rediscover America. You can enjoy many exciting and different shows throughout the year at Branson's largest theater, the Grand Palace. This beautiful venue features Kenny Rogers and a host of other nationally acclaimed music stars. A welcome addition to the Grand Palace is the critically acclaimed stage show, Patsy, a world premiere tribute to Patsy Cline. And at Christmas time, you won't want to miss the fabulous Radio City Music Hall Christmas Spectacular featuring the world-famous Rockettes. The Grand Palace truly lives up to its name. There is so much to do in Branson, and the 76 Mall Complex has it all under one roof. Take in one of four great shows daily at the 76 Music Hall, or shop till you drop at the 76 Mall. They even have a restaurant and indoor miniature golf. A day at the 76 Mall is a day well spent. Well, you heard about it. Now let us show you. Branson's biggest star, the natural beauty of the Ozarks.
Lights, camera, Branson. Hello, Mr. Ewing. Well, hello there. Gee, it's been a long, long time. I'll just get my duds on here and get ready to go. So what you want to tell all those wonderful fans out in the audience? I want to tell all the wonderful fans out in the audience I'm glad to have them at the theater. Glad to have them in Branson. There's a lot of wonderful shows here that I need to go see as many as they possibly can. And I'm glad they're here with us tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. Woo! <laughs> you never know who's going to be out here. Okay, we're going to go out this way. And Janet, you might, are you going to see Dee and Peggy come now? Bye, girls. We're going to go that way. Have fun. Bye. 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 Have fun. Have fun. Uh, yeah. Sisters. Sisters. America, what a country! Only in America I would stand in the morning and put up makeup on my face. <laughs> Everything been going here, Brent. Everything ain't chicken but the beak, my friend. <laughs> Neil, he's my star, my hero. He's real Three minutes! Get in there, sir. Three minutes! Man, we're working! Oh, yeah! We all get along real well, basically, you know. Most of the time. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's usually your fault if we don't. But, um. <laughs> it's usually we, okay, let's let's switch the subject here a little bit. Um, do you think, I, I, I remember what it was. It, because not only does he play guitar on the show, but he's also a fiddler. Uh, but I didn't want to overwork him, you know. At, 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 he's only two. I wish I'd have thought, I wish I'd have heard of Branson sooner and built a theater sooner. When does one change, at what age does one change from Bobby to Bob? I don't, I, I've wondered the same thing with Willie. Look out, Branson. They're gonna get together, ain't they, Dad? They sure are. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Thank you. What a pleasure.